1913, Albert Carey was trying to reach 6,000 acres of burned timberland in the Nahalem River Valley. He had three years to get those trees out to the Columbia River or they were in danger of rotting. Carey saw a railroad as the only practical means to reach his trees, but in order to build a railroad to his timber, he first had to dig one of the longest logging railway tunnels in existence, 1,845 feet through the northernmost walls of Oregon's coast range. Surmounting logistic disasters from underground running water, his engineers completed a tunnel 16 feet wide and 22 feet high in 1915. The Cary Line faced repeated interruptions due to natural collapses, fires, and sabotage by the Wobblies. It still became one of the most productive logging rail lines in history, moving over 3 billion board feet of timber during 23 years of operation. By the summer of 1938, all the forest reached by the Cary Line was logged off. The line's steel rails were pulled up and repurposed elsewhere. Engineers blew shut both entrances, and the site was abandoned. It's been 84 years, and we wanted to know, is there anything left at the famous tunnel? Matt and I hiked deep into the forest on a clear, crisp January morning and went searching for artifacts. After a lot of butchwhacking, we found collapsed portions of the railbed passage, but kept getting diverted onto false leads and were unable to locate the tunnel entrance or any evidence of its construction. At the end of the day, we admitted defeat, but promised we'd be back. At home, we poured over Brian McCamish's Industrial History website to get a better idea of exactly where we needed to look. Now we're back for round two, and we're going to find it this time. So attempt number two commences. Fortunately, uh, the view of Mount Rainier isn't as good this time, but we know what we're doing a little bit better. We're gonna follow this dead road in, see if it lands on the south portal. From what we've looked on the map, it looks like south portal to the tunnel should be just a few, a few hundred yards away from this road. Pretty easy to reach over land. We are descending into the old rail bed. Maybe. There definitely was a massive collapse here. Sinkhole. Yeah, we gotta be above it then. I don't know. Oh yeah, I think it's over here. Definitely. Here we go. Bust through. <sighs> now on the south side of this portal, Let's see where the collapse is. Down below. So this is where the tunnel went into the hillside. There's not much to see now, it just sort of goes from rail bed and then bam, big old landslide down up there. But you come down here, 
follow the old rail bed down. With lots of soft landslide dirt. And there's some really old equipment here. Used to be part of a water tower long, long ago. Looking at that old picture we showed you earlier, you can see the very water tower here over a hundred years ago with only the metal piping and a few broken supports left. Amazingly, what once was human engineers is now occupied by beaver engineers. Way up here on this hillside, there's a beaver actively living here, chopping stuff down left and right. I don't think I've ever seen beavers in this sort of habitat before. Here is a rough skin newt traversing across the rocking road. Where is he going? Only he knows. So right here from the road, you can sort of see where the rail line goes in to the forest. I think it's probably easier to see it in real life than it is on camera two-dimensionally. This old line is filled up with 40, 50 year old trees. But yeah, here's the flat rail bed right here. It's going up, up into that hill. The rail bed keeps coming up here for a while and then looks like they had to trestle it up from here. If you see right here, it looks like there's some really ancient trestle remains. Pretty rotted out. See, they're all collapsing and rotted, but 100 years ago they would have held up the line, taking it up there. This is where the rail bed ends and the mountain begins. Carry Tunnel, it's pretty amazing that that much human effort, and now it's just gone. Can't see anything at all. I can see the landslide coming down. Just a complete collapse on top of the tunnel. So one objective is the tunnel, but of course with us, we have a herp objective as well. And that is to find some of the first clouded salamanders in Columbia County, which we have been unsuccessful to fa so far. They need a lot of down wood and uh, old snags, which this little stand has. Here's a juvenile and satina. Oregon and Satina. This is a rarity. There's a western redback salamander just heading across the hillside. 
You don't, don't usually see them up much when it's raining. Often searching the stream, see if he can find anything. It's virtually impossible to see, but here on the edge of the stream, I just found a little larval Columbia torrent salamander. We had a successful second trip out to find the carry tunnel. We actually found it. Found a few sallies, some cool uh, old remnants from the rail line, and uh, an agate. It's a good day. Trying to cross an active landslide. Not the smartest idea. Ugh. Ugh, son of a gun. <laughs> 